Hola Seekers, this is Kim and bienvenidos to your August 2022 reading. So in this reading, you will be provided with information that addresses what area of life will you see the most changes and or shifts this month, as well as what the overall vibe of this month will be. And then you will get an overview of the month of August, see what main themes this month will cover. And at the end of the reading, I will be giving space for you to receive a direct message from one of your spirit animals. Okay, so as you can see, we have three different groups to choose from, each one represented by a little doodle that I created. So starting off with group one, we have the sprouting plant. Group two is the paper boat. Group three, the magnifying glass. Okay, as always, take as much time as you need in order to choose your group. You can pause the video if you need more time. Once you have chosen, head on over to the comment section down below where the timestamps are provided so that you can skip right on over to your reading. Okay, but now that you have chosen, let's get right into your messages. Let's go. Hola seekers who chose group one, the sprouting plant. I'm just gonna call it the sprout. Bienvenidos to your reading. If you are interested to know how this reading is going to unfold, then I do recommend for you to listen to the intro if you haven't done so already because it is there where I go over everything we are going to cover in this reading. Okay, but as always, I will start off the reading with an intuitively channeled message and then I'll move right into the cards. So when connecting with the energy of this group, the first message that came to mind was up 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 maybe it's because it's the sprout that you guys chose and it's making me think of going upwards you know growing upwards but i do feel this kind of excitement and a bit of impatient energy but not in a frustrating way it's more like an enthusiasm and if you don't resonate with this energy yourself this might be coming from your spirit team I'm actually bouncing up and down on my seat right now. It might be coming from your spirit team, your spirit guides. I feel like they're very excited about something, excited for you. And the message of up, 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 I feel it's coming from them. So if things have been feeling a bit slow for you guys, I feel like the pace is about to pick up. Because you guys did choose the sprout, I do feel like something is growing. Something is gaining momentum. The sprout is making me think of a start, of a beginning. Now let me correct that. It's not exactly the beginning because I feel like the sprout and the energy that I'm sensing is speaking about something that you started a while ago and maybe it started off slow or you were unable to see if this was progressing or moving forward. And now in the month of August, you are finally getting that confirmation and or reassurance that this has been growing, that it is making progress. And this is something that you could have started months ago, even years ago, you know, because it's just like a seed. You plant a seed and the seed takes a while to break open and start rooting. And the rooting process is a sign of progress, but we don't see it because it's happening underground. It's happening in the dark or behind the scenes. And so I feel like this thing that you started or invested time and energy, possibly even money into sometime in the past or a while back was rooting all this time. And now that it has rooted, now that it has become something grounded and stable, it is starting to grow upward. You know what I'm being reminded of? Like those kindergarten projects where we are assigned a seed and asked to nurture it for it to sprout into a beautiful plant. And so I'm just imagining a child who is constantly checking up on their little seed to see any signs of growth, to see it sprout. But every day that they go check, they see the same thing. No sprout in sight until one morning when they least expected, they are gently and lovingly nudged out of bed to go check up on their seed. And lo and behold, there is a sprout. Yeah, so I feel like your spirit team, your guys are super excited to share in this moment with you where you will see that all of your efforts, your hard work, your dedication, perseverance, your patience, your love has allowed and has been allowing for something to grow. Now, I do want to 
note that this could be in terms to something that you have been working on, you know, something external, but this could also be something that you have been working on internally. So this could be speaking about a healing journey or a spiritual journey, because I definitely feel like there is this shift, this very gradual, soft, and beautiful shift that has been occurring within. And maybe because this shift has been so gradual, at times it didn't feel or seem that obvious. But in the month of August, you are going to bear witness to the changes that you have been undergoing, how much progress you have been making. The word softness keeps coming to mind and the energy itself feels very soft. It kind of feels like, if I could describe it, it feels like gently waking up from a very long dream. Oh, and I also feel like spirit is gently encouraging you to take some action towards your dreams or your goals this month. If you have, if you are already taking action or working towards your dream or working towards a goal, then spirit is applauding you and reassuring that all of your efforts are paying off because I feel like this confirmation of the progress is to encourage you to keep going and also as a way of showing you that what you're doing is working. So to keep doing as you're doing. Don't be discouraged by the pace of things because what you are creating is turning out to be something so beautiful, stable, and long-term, okay? But now I am going to move into the cards and I will first pull out an astrology card to find out what the lessons of this month will be as well as what area of life will you see the most changes and or shifts this month. Okay, so we have, ooh, the 12th house with Mars in Pisces and the key term escape. And now I'm going to pull out a card from the Southern Oracle deck to find out what the overall vibe of this month will be. Oh, okay. And we have number 20 with if the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise. And the key phrase is treasured objective, purpose, determination, smooth sailing, and assistance. So the 12th house is the house of hidden strengths and weaknesses. It is the house of spirituality and it sheds light on our fears. There is a very dreamlike quality to the 12th house because it deals with the unconscious, what we are not so aware of. Which is interesting because we were just speaking about how when a seed grows, it first grows downward in the dark. And because we cannot see that whole process, we are unaware of that growth. So I definitely see that in the month of August, you are going to receive proof or validation of what has been growing what has been developing all this time. Now, for those of you who have been working hard on something, you will find out what has been working in your life. Because if this is growing and developing nicely, then that in itself will be confirmation that what you have been doing thus far is working. So to keep at it, keep on moving forward. For others of you, this will give you insight as to what you have been focusing on all this time. What have you been giving energy to, especially subconsciously? This is kind of reminding me of words of affirmation, habits, repetition. You know, the more we repeat something, it becomes a habit and then a way of living or a way of being. So there is an awareness happening this month. What has been developing? What has been working? What have I been focusing on? And through this awareness, I see you either choosing to continue doing as you're doing or make some type of changes, you know, because this could be, and this is just a hypothetical example, a situation in which you developed a habit of sleeping late and waking up super early. And over time, this has developed into 
insomnia or feeling restless, feeling fatigued, anxious. And so now noticing the effects of this habit, you can either choose to continue doing as you're doing or to break out of that habit by choosing a sleeping schedule that allows you more hours of sleep to fully rest. So I feel like this month is all about what has been happening behind the scenes, what has been developing underground per se, so that you can make alterations or adjustments accordingly. This example just came to mind, or this analogy, if weeds have been growing instead of bean sprouts, you are being given the opportunity to take note of it this month so that you can start weeding out and taking more time to nurture the bean sprouts. Because there is this advice here or this message of taking accountability. You are being encouraged to not run away from perceived problems or responsibility, but rather to take accountability. Because if you are being shown all of this, it's because you're ready to make the necessary changes needed so only that which you want to grow can continue growing. My focus keeps being directed towards this image of a monk and I recall I did mention how this growth here could be in regards to a healing journey or a spiritual journey. So definitely I feel like in the month of August you are going to be witness to all the spiritual development that you have undergone. And you are going to be provided with opportunities to apply the lessons that you have learned and integrated. So I feel like this is simply reassurance from spirit letting you know you don't have to run away or feel like you need to escape from anything that comes up this month because first of all, we won't give you anything that you can't handle. So if it's coming up, it's because you have all the tools needed in order to address this. So if you give yourself the opportunity, you will see that you can and that you will because the solution is in you. You are the key. It's sort of like a math problem that when you first look at it, it looks super complex and even scary or intimidating. But as soon as you really give yourself the time to look over it and or read through it, you find that, oh, it's not that hard. The answer is quite clear. Or, I know this, I know how to solve this. I got this. So that's kind of the vibe that I am getting. Yeah, so it feels to me like that excitement that I was picking up on coming from your spirit team, it's because by this point in the month of August, you have already acquired the knowledge or the preparation in order to face or overcome either an obstacle or something that you felt stuck in or possibly were scared of or felt intimidated by. And so now we can get through or over this obstacle. Now we can get over this fear. Now we can stop feeling intimidated or scared by this thing. It sort of feels like breaking the barriers. You can definitely break some barriers in the month of August. And the word escape is making me think of escaping from your fears, escaping from limitations or limited beliefs, limited thinking. Um, With the card, if the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, it's interesting how we have the key term determination because we were speaking about perseverance in the intuitively channeled message. So I feel like this is simply reassurance from spirit that... If things have felt very difficult up until now, if you felt like you needed to push through or you were struggling, from here onwards, it's going to be smooth sailing. And they want you to know that they acknowledge your determination. They acknowledge your efforts, your perseverance, your hard work. And they acknowledge that it hasn't been easy. And if you are done, if you are fed up with needing to push through, with needing to struggle in order to overcome or to succeed, whatever that may mean to you personally, spirit also acknowledges that. And they also don't want you to see you struggling anymore. And so they are willing and they are wanting to work with you to assist you in your journey so that you won't experience as many bumps on the road. I feel like they're saying, don't worry, we'll speak with God, source, universe, however you want to see it, 
so that these waters that you are sailing on will be kept steady and smooth. So the message that I'm getting from this card is the good Lord is willing. The good Lord is willing to help you out because they've seen how much work and effort you put into growing and evolving, into nurturing yourself and your dreams, and possibly even into helping others. I feel like a lot of you go out of your way to help other people and universe recognizes that. Of course, they want to remind you to not get lost in other people's problems, to remember yourself and remember that you are also worthy of your time, energy, and affection, to remember to take some time out for yourself, and that even though we appreciate all the assistance and support you offer, please don't feel like it is your responsibility to do all of this work, especially do all of the work for others. Because that can take accountability away from other people. And in order to create change in our personal lives, accountability is necessary. So with the escape card, there is this heads up kind of or disclaimer, let's say, from spirit to not get into the habit of escaping from your problems or responsibilities through taking on the problems or responsibilities of others. And with the key phrase treasured objective, I feel like this is once again simply confirmation that something that you have been working hard on, you are going to see that you are closer and closer to reaching your objective or reaching a goal or accomplishing a dream. And with the key term purpose, the message finding the purpose just came to mind. So I feel like if any of you have been feeling discouraged um, about your life path or life purpose or life direction, or if any of you have been feeling discouraged about your efforts, about the work that you've been putting into something, in the month of August, I see you receiving reassurance that there was a purpose. There is a purpose for everything that you have done thus far. Your efforts will be validated. It's like there was a purpose for this. I wasn't just wasting time. I wasn't just wasting my energy. There was a reason. There was a purpose. And now I can see what it is. Um, okay, I will advise to pay closer attention to the numbers that you see here. So we have the number 12, 20. If we reduce the numbers, we have three, two. If we look at the numbers individually, we have one, two, and zero because these numbers might be of importance. They could serve as a confirmation for some of you guys. So I personally like to interpret the number one as new beginnings, leadership, assertiveness, the number two as the number of balance and duality, partnership, and the number zero as transition, purification, and like starting over a clean slate, as well as infinite potential. And the number three as a number of creativity, creation, and expansion, as well as a very grounding number. Because if I recall, Earth is the third planet in the solar system. If you think about it as the ones that are closest to the sun, um, moving outwards. Um, okay, but now I am going to move into El Tarot. And here is where we are going to get an overview of the month, receive any messages, advice, and or guidance that spirit may have for you. And I wanted to pull out the cards in a different way. I wanted to try something new, so let's see how it works out. Um, okay, but so we have, oh, for the first card, we have the world upright with completion, wholeness, and end of cycle. For the second card, we have the Queen of Swords, upright with honest, protective, and quirky. And for our third card, we have the Eight of Swords, upright with feeling trapped, blind to the truth, and self-limiting. Okay. And now I'm going to shuffle the deck to pull out a card that will represent the overall vibe of this spread. 
then we have the eight of coins in reverse with lack of ambition, underqualified, and mediocre. And the card at the back of the deck will serve as a postscript PS from Spirit. Any extra little news or information that they want you to know for the month of August. And we have the High Priest of Right with Knowledge, Sharing, Beliefs, and Fellowship. Okay. Now I want to pull out some key terms to find out what the main themes of this month will be. Oh, okay. And one more. Okay. We have patience, reveal, conclusion, travel, connection, growth, communicate, ask, Validate and success. Ooh, okay. So it's quite interesting how I took the time to mention Earth and then the world card came up because the world reminds me of the planet Earth. Hmm, because you guys did gravitate towards the sprouting plant. Maybe some of you um, in the month of August are going to spend some time either in nature or you're going to find that your interests will be gravitating more towards finding ways to help Earth, Mother Gaia. If you associate with being an environmentalist, um, if you are already interested in sustainability, then in the month of August, you could be spending more time taking action towards these pursuits. But the world card is the card of completion, coming full circle. It is also a card of success and accomplishments. The first phrase or message that came to mind when looking at the world card was coming back home, because the world card can also denote a sense of belonging. So with the key term connection being here, as well as communicate, you could be finding a community or a group of people that you feel accepted by, that offer you that sense of belonging. And this community could be formed of people coming from all walks of life, from all over the world. You could be meeting these people through travel. Maybe you're traveling somewhere or taking a road trip and you bump into them. Or you could be meeting them online. And I feel like that might be the case for a lot of you because the world does make me think of the internet, of social media. So you could be meeting these people through an online platform. And for those of you who are currently in a long distance relationship, and this relationship doesn't have to be romantic, it could be platonic. For example, you met someone online a couple months ago or a couple years ago, it could be that in the month of August, you will be provided with the opportunity to meet these people in person or this individual in person because we do have the travel card. So some of you could be meeting someone online for the first time. And for those of you who are already in online contact with someone, you could be meeting them in person in the month of August. But overall, I feel like the world card is representing the ending of a cycle. And this cycle that is ending could very well be a cycle of waiting, needing to wait or needing to push through without any confirmation or validation that you are on the right path or that things are moving forward. You know that phase? The one where you're doing all that you can, putting all the work, but all you receive in return is silence. Like you don't know if this is worth it, if your efforts are being acknowledged or if you are making any progress, if you know what I'm talking about and you feel like you've been in that phase, the world card is letting us know that that phase is ending. Because with the eight of coins in reverse, when this card is upright, it speaks about perseverance, dedication, hard work, 
So it being in reverse, it makes me think of someone who has already done all the work, someone who has put in all this effort, but now they're feeling discouraged because they don't see where this is all going. They don't see how their work and dedication is making a difference. And so if you feel like you've been in this energy or this is where you are right now, I feel like Spirit is saying in the month of August, all this is going to change going to do a 180 because we do have the key term growth here as well as the key term reveal so this month growth will be revealed to you and you know this could also be referring to something in specific so for example as a hypothetical example a business a business that you have been developing or working on for months or possibly even years and all this time that you've been developing or working on this business you have seen rewards and growth but not to the scale or the level that you were hoping for it's sort of like you've been receiving from this business but you've been receiving breadcrumbs and this has been enough to keep you going but it has led you to feeling either a bit discouraged or wondering whether this is the right path, whether you should continue pursuing this or putting as much effort as you have or wondering if you are doing something wrong or you need to put in even more effort. And so if that resonates with you, this period of confusion is coming to an end. We also have the key term conclude. I do feel called to share this because it is coming to mind. If you resonate with having put a lot of time, dedication, effort, money into something that has left you with little to no rewards, and by this point you are no longer inspired to keep pursuing this, and it's not only because you feel discouraged by it, but the passion for it is gone, or you feel like you're being redirected towards a new purpose, a new goal, then please know that it is okay. It is okay to close this chapter of your life because the world is also making me think of someone who is choosing to move forwards. But the feeling that I get from the world card is that there is no feeling of resentment. There's no sadness attached to this moving forwards or moving on. Because when I look at this person in the world card, to me, it seems like they have a spring to their step. Like they're okay with this ending and they are ready to walk into this new chapter of their life. So if you resonate with that, then know that it is okay. Because this sprouting upwards could very well be you breaking out of a cycle, you breaking out of something that was draining the life and energy from you. So I will ask of you to use discernment because I know these are two completely different messages. So for those of you who have been working on something that you still feel passionate about, even though you might feel a little bit discouraged by this, but when it comes down to it, you are still willing to continue working on this, then Spirit is saying, if you continue on this path, we assure you that the pace is going to pick up and that your efforts will be validated. But for those of you who are ready to close this chapter of your life, then Spirit is saying, follow that call. Because it could definitely be the case that you are being invited to step into a new cycle that pertains to something totally different from what you have been working on thus far. But for both cases, I do see success. <laughs> so if you choose to pursue something new, I feel like you're going to see, like all things, you know, all things take time, all things require work. But I feel like you won't have to work as hard for this or you won't have to wait as long to see some signs of growth or progress or reap rewards from it. Just a reassurance, just in case someone is feeling guilty over choosing to end something in order to start something new, becoming aware and knowing when it's time to walk away from something, when it's time to say goodbye per se, that denotes a level of self-awareness, wisdom, and maturity. And it's interesting because we do have the high priest here who denotes knowledge, wisdom, and maturity. So Knowing when it's time to let go and choosing to let go shows how far you have come in your journey, in your spiritual evolution. Yeah, because life is all about cycles. <laughs> I think embracing those cycles, it's part of the spiritual journey. Okay, but moving on to the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is associated with the element of air, which rules the realms of communication, 
the mind, thoughts. And the Queen of Swords does represent an air sign, so Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. Just putting it out there in case it is relevant to any one of you guys. But the Queen of Swords represents someone who is independent, open-minded, intelligent, logical, honest, and fiercely protective. The Queen of Swords also reminds me of someone who can or is very assertive. When they've made up their mind about something, they have made up their mind. Yes, they are open-minded, but they are not easily swayed by other people's opinions. They like to make up their own mind about things. And so I feel like this ties back to the previous message I was getting from the world card. You know, whether you choose to move on or forwards with something, that's up to you. So with the Queen of Swords, only you know how hard you worked for something. Only you know whether you're willing to keep on pursuing this and working hard for this. So the Queen of Swords is encouraging you to not be afraid to make a decision or choose something that goes against other people's expectations. Because at the end of the day, the one who will be walking the path that gets chosen is you, not others. So with this queen balancing this sword atop of her head, I see you guys spending some time in the month of August to kind of analyze or assess your current situation and how you want this to progress or what you want to make of it. Whenever the Queen of Swords comes up, I also think of someone who has decided to walk away from something, who has decided to cut connections with something and move on and not look back. And so some of you could definitely be choosing to walk away from something in the month of August. The message weeding out did come through at the beginning. So you could be removing from your life that which is no longer working for you. Now the Eight of Swords represents someone who is feeling trapped by their own mind. Someone's worries or assumptions is causing them to feel like there is no way out or there's no better way or there's no solution or there's no hope for the future. But it's important to note that even though they might feel real, they are not a representation of what is happening in reality. So it's interesting how we have this contrast of the Queen of Swords and then the Eight of Swords. Both the element of air, but very different energies. And so some of you might be needing to make an important decision in the month of August. Actually, I don't feel like you need to make an important decision in the month of August. That's not the vibe that I'm getting. But you, you yourself might feel like you need to make a decision now. Like you need to act now. That's what I'm getting with the Eight of Swords, the sense of urgency. Um, and with the Queen of Swords, it's the complete opposite. Like the Queen of Swords seems pretty chill. She's like, okay, I'm going to take my time. I'm really going to think this through. Whilst the Eight of Swords is feeling anxious because of their lack of clarity. Like if I'm not certain now, then it's all going to fall apart. If I don't have the answers now, then things will never become clear to me. And so there might be this back and forth going on in the month of August. And it's interesting how they're both dressed in the color red. The color red reminds me of the root chakra. And the root chakra is about trust, feeling safe, feeling secure. And this energy center, when it's blocked, it's blocked by fear. I feel like with the Eight of Swords, the fears are holding her down. The uncertainty is holding her back. It's creating this mind pris prison. Um, and with the Queen of Swords, her fears, her uncertainties, is actually what is giving her strength and motivation. Being or feeling uncertain about something is not an indicator of failure. It's not an indicator that something is going to go bad. No, because we don't have to be 100% certain or even 90% certain at all times. A little doubt is healthy because it allows us to use discernment. And I feel like that's what the Queen of Swords is representing, being discerning. So I feel like this month, it's really about looking at your current situation 
And, you know, considering the past, considering all that you have invested into something and you outweighing the pros and cons, you yourself choosing whether the fulfillment that you do receive from this, no matter how little or big you perceive it, is enough to continue pursuing this path, whether something is worth it. The challenging thing about this is that you're making this decision or assessing this situation without knowing where this is going to lead you exactly. You're just assessing it from the point in which you are right now and what you have experienced thus far. You know, because at this point, you are receiving reassurance that yes, there is progress here. Progress has been made and it's continuing to be made. Yet the outcome, the outcome or how this continues to progress is not so clear. You know, because success, success is a very ambiguous word. Success can mean various different things. It can mean financial wealth and abundance. It can mean emotional fulfillment. It can mean stability. So yes, there is success at the end, but what success this is referring to is yet unclear. So this is one of those things in which you have to go at it both logically and intuitively in order to make a decision. And I feel like once again, spirit is saying you don't have to make a decision now. You don't, it doesn't have to be in the month of August, but you could start contemplating about it now, especially if you are struggling with something, especially if something isn't working out for you or your interest is being directed towards something new. You know, because if something isn't working out for you, you can call it out. You can be honest about it. You don't have to put up with it. This could be referring to anything, and it doesn't have to be referring to only one thing. Like already mentioned with the examples, this could be in regards to a business. It could be a career path. It could be a project. It could be a hobby, a habit, a mindset. It could be a place. It could be a relationship. I'm not really picking up on that, but for some, this could be in regards to a relationship. Like I said, it could be one or many things. But I definitely see a lot of you guys coming to this realization that you don't have to stay in a situation that causes you so much distress. It makes you feel like you have to give a good chunk of yourself in order to keep it afloat. Because if it's depleting you, if it's depleting you of your life force, is it truly worth it? And that is up to you to decide. Um, But just remember, you are important. Your well-being is important. I feel like we know this, but we can forget. We can forget that we are also an individual and that we also require of our time. Okay, with the Queen of Swords and the Eight of Swords, um, you might be receiving constructive criticism or you might be receiving a lot of advice during this month. But again, please don't let this advice or criticism or opinions divert you from your path or the path that you have chosen for yourself. Because like I always like to remind myself, advice is only to be listened to. It is not to be taken as truth because what worked for one person might not work for you. And that's because we are all walking on different paths, learning different lessons. So always be mindful to take into account your personal needs, your dreams, and what your journey requires or needs at this moment. I also feel called to say that we can often get discouraged by what we see on social media on the internet because what we see on social media is often glorified or it's edited so it either makes it look like something that we need to have or accomplish in order to be successful or happy or it makes it seem like something that is out of our reach social media or what is being shown us on social media can be very deceptive If you tend to spend a lot of time on social media and you tend to compare your self or your journey, your life to what you see on social media, you are being encouraged to maybe detach from social media for a while. 
especially if it leads you to question your own accomplishments, your growth, or it leaves you feeling like you've done something wrong or you haven't done enough. So it's better to bring one's attention to the now, to our own path, and work from there. See what truly works for us, what truly is of us and inspires us, uplifts us, and motivates us. What truly brings us healing instead of following the recipes or the routines, the lifestyle of other people who are on a completely different journey than us. Okay, with the high priest being here. Oh, look what we have underneath the magician. Um, and then the king of swords, counterpart to the queen of swords. But with the high priest being here as well as the world, some of you could be choosing to share your knowledge with others, especially choosing to share your knowledge online or through an online platform. If you have been thinking about this, then I feel like this is encouragement from spirit to do so. Because with the Queen of Swords showing up here, as well as the High Priest, I feel like you guys are very knowledgeable about something or you are very wise. You have a lot of wisdom and your wisdom could assist various people. And with the Magician being here, I feel like you could also help empower others or help others improve their skills, their skill set. Because I feel like you guys could be very skilled at something. Yeah, that's just a PS from Spirit. Um, the High Priest could also be representing someone who could be, like I said, providing you with guidance and or advice in this month. They could be a mentor, a life coach, or someone who has a lot of wisdom. This could be a friend, a co-worker, a family member, even a stranger. <laughs> Someone that you meet online, maybe. This could be like a post that you stumble upon Reddit that really helps you make sense of something or gives you clarity about something. Yeah, that's just that's just an example, but it could be something like that. Yeah, because with the key term ask, I feel like if you ask for advice or guidance, you will receive it. Like You could ask of it from someone and you will receive it and that might be what helps you make sense of something or let's say if you ask universe for guidance they will respond by bringing in someone to help you get out of your head to help you make sense of something or they might help you stumble upon some form of information that could help you okay but those are all the messages i am seeing with these cards so now i'm going to move into the last segment of this reading Okay, so for the segment of this reading, I will give space for you to receive a direct message from one of your spirit animals. So I will ask of you to take a moment and cast your gaze upon these rocks and see which one calls out to you. Because the one that calls out to you will be the one that has a message for you. So if more than one calls out to you, that is perfectly fine. It might simply mean that there is more than one spirit animal who has a message for you at this moment. Okay, so I will give you a moment to choose your stone or rock. So we have rock one, two, and three. Okay, so I will start off with the first rock. So who is the spirit animal who has a message for those who chose rock? Numero uno. So we have the hummingbird with the key term reflection and the message, the tiniest bird of her species. Hummingbird beats her wings up to 200 times per second. With such excessive activity, she tires quickly. To recover, she settles into her favorite perching place and falls into a deep sleep. In her slumber, she sets the example and encourages us to rest and reflect. In profound contemplation and radiant connection, we transcend to discover divinity. Hummingbirds' iridescent feathers are dazzling, inspiring us to take in life's nectar. Okay? Okay, but now moving on to the second rock. If you guys hear mumbling, it's my neighbors, <laughs> but you guys got the horse with passion and the message, horse is the confident embodiment of our unconstrained psyche. 
She carries the essential energy needed to traverse mountains. With freedom in sight, Horse charges forward passionately and full of vitality. She embraces her wild, untamed spirit, eager to bathe in the brilliant sun and cover herself with earth. She faces challenges with confidence. Regal and majestic, no matter the environment, horse models self-trust. Walk, trot, or canter when horse gallops, join stride and run with her. Okay, now moving to the last rock. Okay, so two fell out. Um, we have the spider with resourcefulness and the message Spider is a remarkable figure of feminine energy and creativity. She is characterized by her strong devotion to her craft, using resources found at her own fingertips. Her art is beautiful yet practical. Comfortable with intricacies, she aids us in finding the answers to our own complicated webs. She reminds us to explore each problem fully in hopes a suitable solution will reveal itself. When Spider enters our life, she does so to encourage us to take charge, to weave every step of our destiny. Ooh, okay. And then we have the bull with perseverance and the message. As we journey through life, we are faced with many challenges. Bull reminds us to persevere. Hard-won gains bring confidence. In our strength, we find the courage to defy failure. He encourages us to lead with veracity, a burning desire to achieve. Bull reminds us about the importance of self-protection against false criticism and inspires us to be bold enough to dare and strong enough to achieve. In his example, our dreams become reality when we embrace our personal power. Yes, I was going to say that some of you might be receiving some criticism or unsolicited advice. From someone because that's what I was getting with the eight of coins the queen of swords and the eight of swords so I know it's difficult but please don't let this criticism comment opinion get you down or get you questioning yourself or your skills because there is constructive criticism and then there's just being plain mean and offensive so don't let others project their own insecurities or self-limited beliefs or baggage onto you by taking it on or validating it through acknowledgement or you questioning yourself, okay? But those are all the messages I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. If you are new to this channel and you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings all the information is in my website and the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching until the very end and thanks to all of you who took a moment to watch the advertisements. That is the most simplest way to support me and to support this channel. So muchas, muchas gracias. Yes, but that is all for now. Wishing you a wonderful month of August and until the next moment, bye bye. Hola Seekers who chose group 2, the Yellow Paper Boat, bienvenidos to your reading. If you are interested to know how this reading is going to unfold, then I do recommend for you to listen to the intro if you haven't done so already, because it is there where I go over everything we are going to cover in this reading. So as always, I will begin this reading with an intuitively channeled message, and then I'll move right into the cards. So when connecting with the energy of this group, the first message that came to mind was wind resistance, which is... Pretty interesting message. Seeing that you guys chose the paper boat, some of you could try to start or launch something in the month of August, but find yourself facing a lot of resistance from external forces. So just to give you a hypothetical example, and I give this example because it happened to me, let's say you decide to launch or open your YouTube channel by posting your first YouTube video in the month of August. But you find yourself experiencing a lot of resistance from either the platform or your internet services. 
and after several attempts, your video cannot be uploaded or published. So plans get delayed or things get pushed back. Things just don't play out how you expected them to. So if you find resistance, please don't be discouraged by this. Please don't take this as a sign that you're doing something wrong or that this wasn't meant to be because that's not what I'm sensing. It might just be that the circumstances are not the most favorable at this moment to support this venture or it could have something to do with the timing. Maybe the timing is just a tad bit off and that's why you are facing some resistance. Maybe it has something to do with the alignments or the transits of the planets or once again the circumstances. Um, because I remember that when I tried to open my YouTube channel, I was in a rush, I was in a hurry, and I was also going through some stuff. So maybe this could be a heads up from Spirit to not try to force things to happen, to not feel rushed. If you need a little bit more time in order to launch this or start this, then it's okay to take your time. Because I feel like this is asking of your complete and utter attention. And I feel like this is supposed to be a joyful experience and or moment. So if you are in a rush or you're anxious or you're dealing with other stuff, you have other worries that you are concerned over, you might not enjoy this moment as much and Spirit really wants for you to enjoy it, to be present with it. And one more thing. Oh yes, I also feel that something that has been in the back of your mind is going to take precedence this month. So this could be an idea that was at the back burner of your mind that you are now choosing to focus on in the month of August. Okay, but now I'm going to move into the cards and I will start off by pulling out an astrology card which will give us information in regards to what lessons you will be learning this month as well as what area of life will you see the most changes and or shifts this month. So for group two, oops, oops, did card flip over? Nope. Okay. Could you guys hear the helicopter? Let me just say that there has been so many noise interruptions for this group. I actually had to pause recording because the noise got so loud that I just couldn't continue the reading. And still, even when I decided to resume recording, there was still noise going on. It's like every time I started your guys' reading, noise will erupt out of nowhere. And that reminds me of the message that just came through, how there could be interference from external forces or factors. So I feel like this is just confirmation that this could be happening in the month of August. So I know that could be frustrating. So if you're trying to do something and there's interference, if it's available to you, know that you can pause, take a step back and come back or resume at a later time at a more suitable time. Yeah. Okay. But now to reveal the card. So we have the eighth house with Mercury and Scorpio and the key term extremism. So the eighth house is the house of transformation, of endings to welcome new beginnings. And it's also the house of shared property and finances. Okay, but before I get more into this card, I actually want to pull out another card from the Southern Oracle deck. And this will give us information in regards to what the overall vibe of this month will be. Okay. And we have number 33 with pot calling the kettle black. And the key phrase is hypocrisy, projection, similarity, blame, and introspection needed. Oh, first of all, I'd like to point out that we do have the number 8 because August is the eighth month of the year. So something very significant could be happening this month that could be altering the course of things. And I feel like this crow is actually, with them wearing a crown, it is actually representing divine intervention. So I feel like divine intervention will play a huge role 
in your life in the month of August. So these delays or setbacks could actually be a form of divine intervention to save you from something or save you of something. Yeah, so with this person flailing this paper or this contract about, this could be something like giving you more time to read something over, to pay closer attention to the details or the disclaimer or the closure in order to catch something that is not going to benefit you in the long run. So for example, if you are looking to buy a home, um, maybe something in the contract is a little sketchy. And so if there is delays in purchasing the home, it could very well be universe's way of giving you the time to make note of this sketchiness so that you can call it out or address it. Yeah, but that's just an example. It doesn't necessarily have to be what you are going through or will be experiencing in the month of August. It's just to give you guys an idea. I also feel like there might be some people who could very well be the ones who are creating resistance or resisting whatever you have to offer because Mercury is the planet of intellect, reasoning, and communication. So it's very possible that something that you are communicating to others might not be taken well by others or they might resist what you have to say because we do have pot calling the kettle black and as you can see the key term projection is here. So people could be projecting their fears, their insecurities, their self-limiting beliefs onto you. And this could be vice versa as well, where someone decides to express their opinions about something and it might not sit right with you. Or you might feel like this person said this in order to offend you or had some ill intent. But I don't feel like that's necessarily the case because I'm not sensing that the one who expressed this had ill intent. They were simply stating their opinion, but it's just that it didn't sit right with the other person. Because with the extremism card, this card talks about seeing from another person's point of view. Taking a moment to put yourself in the other person's shoes in order to understand where they're coming from. So just as a hypothetical example, um, let's say someone has the habit of sharing other people's personal life experiences to prove a point or as an example to a life lesson that they are trying to share with others. And the person whose personal life experience was shared gets offended by this or gets hurt by this. And the person who shared the life experience doesn't understand why this person would get upset. And that creates conflict. So instead of just brushing it off or making as the person who got upset was being dramatic, the one who shared the life experience without permission could actually take a moment to consider why someone would get upset by this. They could even ask. And in doing so, come to the understanding that this is something personal, that this is something vulnerable, and that it is respectful to ask the individual first before sharing their personal life with others. You know, so that's one example. Um, so I feel like with the extremism card, you are also being reminded that it's okay for you to let others know what doesn't sit right with you, what you are not comfortable with. You are not being over dramatic. You are not being extreme when choosing to set your boundaries. And if other people do not know why this is important to you, you can definitely explain it to them if you feel called to do so. You know, sometimes it helps to receive an explanation and it's only because since we are so different from one another, sometimes it's not so obvious why something could affect one person and not another. You know, sometimes we need that clarity as to where we are overstepping. 
in order so that we don't do it again. So sometimes that explanation is helpful. But of course, you don't have to over explain yourself or over extend yourself to make another person understand. Because if the other person does not want to understand, then that's more of their problem than yours. And with similarity and projection, a lot of people could be mirroring you in the month of August because we do have the eighth house showing up, which is the house of transformation because it's connected with the energy of Scorpio and Scorpio is about depth. It really likes to go in depth with things, explore the shadow side, do that shadow work. So Pay close attention to what sets you off this month, especially about people, because they could be projecting something that is going on within. So if someone acts or behaves a certain way that irks you, it might actually be a behavior that you yourself do unconsciously or subconsciously that is not in alignment with who you truly are. You know, one one example that came to mind, um, again, another hypothetical example, is gossiping. Maybe you don't like when other people gossip or talk about other people, but you could unintentionally or subconsciously find yourself gossiping or talking about other people from time to time. So, yeah, I feel like you are being advised that instead of reacting in the month of August to take some time to introspect so that you can choose how to respond to these type of situations. Take a moment to find out why something doesn't sit right with you. Um, Take a moment to find out why you don't really vibe with someone. Because sometimes, maybe not all the time, but sometimes the people that we don't vibe with, they have a lot to teach us. They can teach us a lot about what we don't want, what we don't want to experience or what we ourselves don't want to emit. So it doesn't mean that you have to associate yourself with people that you don't connect with, but maybe take some time to see why you didn't connect with this person. What was it about them or their vibe that didn't sit right with you? Because sometimes, again, not all the times, but I do feel it's most of the times The reason why we don't like someone or vibe with someone has more to do with us than the other person. But it's harder to accept that than just saying, oh, I didn't vibe with them. One example that is coming to mind is, you know, envy. Sometimes we reject people out of envy or jealousy. And to accept that we are envious of someone or jealous of someone might not be easy for us. So instead of accepting that or acknowledging that, we just push the other person away or choose to not interact with them, to not deal with those emotions that came up for us. So again, that's just an example. I personally feel that the biggest growth or the biggest lessons happens through relationships because people can really get us out of our comfort zone or they can really hold up a mirror to the things that we don't want to see. And it's sort of what I'm feeling with this image here. I know this is a paper, but I'm imagining them holding up a mirror to this other person over here. And this person is kind of refusing to see their reflection. They don't want to. Of course, this is not to say that you have to put up with the BS of other people. Of course not. Remember, we did get that message of applying your boundaries You don't have to continue interacting with someone in order to introspect about the situation. So in the month of August, you could be discovering a new perspective or perception. Your opinion about something could be changing. And or you could find yourself empathizing with someone, especially someone unexpected. Yeah, maybe someone that you didn't like at first. After getting to know them, you find out that you have more in common than you thought. Keep looking at the crow. And I feel like it's a message from spirit, a message of pay attention. Hmm. If you find yourself meeting someone in the month of August that you don't get a good inkling about. I know I was speaking about vibes a while ago, but this is not the same thing as, ugh. 
you find that person annoying or you find them silly. This is more about when you're around this person, you feel uneasy. You don't feel safe. Please pay attention to that. Our body is super intelligent. So pay attention to the signs of your body and also your surroundings. Because with this crow, I feel like universe will let you know when something isn't right. So for example, if you're in a place or you're with someone or a group of people and an alarm goes off or several sirens go off at the same time, that might be a sign from spirit to pay attention. Something is not right. Um, or for example, if you're about to meet someone or go somewhere and something happens that prevents you from meeting that person or going to that place, again, pay attention to that. Don't try to force things to happen because that might be divine intervention coming through. And I don't, I don't mean to scare you guys with this. It's not something scary. It just like, for example, the other day, my neighbors were throwing a party and it seemed all happy and joyful at the beginning, but by the end of the party, there was this huge argument that erupted. So if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, if you don't like being in those type of situations, even if you're not the one fighting, if you don't like witnessing that, then spirit knows that, universe knows that, and so they will keep you away from that. So it could be something like that. Yeah, and I feel like this also has a lot to do with giving you more time to look things over. You know, especially if you are going to sign some contract or make some agreement or some type of promise or commitment. Um, this whole divine intervention could be universe's way of giving you more time to look things over, to prepare, or possibly even find a better way, a better proposal. Also, crows... Um, birds, more specifically black birds, could be of significance during this time. It could be the way that your spirit guides are showing up for you. So if you see crows or black birds behaving in a strange manner, also pay attention to that. See what is happening around you. That could be spirit's way of coming through to warn you about something or their way of telling you pay attention, okay? Yeah. Also, be careful with people who are on edge this month. If you don't have to interact with them that much or be with them, then, you know, maybe keep a bit of a distance from these people until, like, they cool down or settle down. Okay? But those are all the messages I am seeing with these cards. Oh, I'd like to point out that we do have the number 33. So you could be seeing repeated threes throughout the month of August, especially the number 33. Um, and this could also be a sign from spirit. Um, because the number three does remind me of the third house, which is the house of communication, which is ruled by the planet Mercury. Repeated threes could be signifying communication. So when you see... 33 or repeated threes, it might be Spirit's way of letting you know that you are about to receive important communication or to be mindful of your communication or to pay attention to what is being communicated to you at that moment. Um, if we reduce the number 33, we get the number 6. So August 6th might be an important date for some of you guys. So yeah, just keep that in mind, okay? But now I'm going to move into El Tarot. So now we are going to get an overview of the month. And I actually wanted to try something different in the way that I pull out the cards. So bear with me, you guys. Okay. I have to spice things up every now and then. Okay, so let's see. For your first card, we have the Three of Cups upright with parties, indulgence, and happiness. For your second card, we have the Knight of Cups upright with chivalry, hopeless, romantic, and idealistic. And for your third card, we have the Three of Wands upright with leadership, moving forward, and initiative. Okay, and now I am going to pull out a card to find out what the overall energy of this spread is. So we have the Ace of Wands, 
and it did fall out in the horizontal position so that is how I'm going to take it. When cards fall out in this direction it either represents the foundation from which the overall energy is being grounded on so basically it's the overall energy or it can denote a stagnant or blocked energy. Okay but upright we have breakthrough, inspiration, new direction and in reverse we have fearing change, unmotivated and restlessness. And I am going to look at the card at the back of the deck because this will be like a postscript from Spirit, a PS. Um, ooh, and we have the Magician upright with resourcefulness, manifestation, and make things happen. And before I reveal this card, I was going to say this could be either good news or blessings that they want you to know about for the month of August. Okay, but now I'm going to pull out some key terms and this will give us information about the main themes that this month will focus on. So we have communicate, reveal, validate, create, project, Ask, union, ooh, interesting, and conclude. A lot of these key terms came out for group one, and I did shuffle the key terms before pulling them out for you guys. So I'd like to start off with the Ace of Wands. Aces always speak of new beginnings, and this ace is associated with the element of fire because it is wands, which is an element that is passionate, assertive creative, and action oriented. So with this card showing up in the horizontal position, as mentioned already, it does feel like something that you want to commence, something that you want to begin is taking some time to set off or to start. And it's interesting because we do have the key term project and create. So I'm thinking of like a creative project. So some of you could be trying to begin a creative project during the month of August, but you might find yourself facing some challenges or obstacles or interference. And this might be coming from other people because we do have the Three of Cups, but I feel like it's mostly coming from, you know, external factors. And for whatever reason, the image of a printer just came to mind. So um, this could be something like you want to sell some art prints, but the printer isn't working, isn't cooperating with you. So you have to make some adjustments in regards to your deadlines or rearrange your schedule. Now, I also feel like this Ace of Wands energy is showing up in the horizontal position because a lot of you could be wanting to rush into something. You could be feeling impulsive about something in the month of August. And this is universe's way of telling you, whoa, 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 slow down. I know that you're excited, but maybe this excitement is not allowing you to think clearly. Or it's not allowing you to see some points that you might find important later on. So let's allow for this excitement to settle down so that you can feel more grounded and level-headed to see the whole picture instead of just focusing on the one thing that is getting you excited. Yeah, because I keep looking at the key term conclude and it's making me think of conclusions. Reaching some conclusion without all the information or without all of the facts. So before rushing into something or out of something, make sure that you have clarity over or about the situation because this could also be a situation in which you are reaching some conclusion about something or someone that is causing you to impulsively walk away from something or terminate a contract or end a relationship. So with the key term communicate, if there is not enough clarity, instead of making assumptions, if you can gain clarity by asking, then don't be afraid to ask. Now with the Three of Cups, the Three of Cups is making me think of friendships, of gatherings, 
of networking. So as mentioned previously, there could be some form of miscommunication this month. Something that you say might not be sitting right with a group of people, or maybe someone who is part of your inner circle or your group of friends might say something that does not sit right with you. And so once again, it's important to not take any form of impulsive action during this time because this impulsivity might result in a severed friendship or might result in misunderstandings. So I feel like the extremism card is saying things don't have to go to these extremes because you can choose to communicate in order to clear things out. So if there is a misunderstanding, I feel like, like the Three of Cups is saying understanding, mutual understanding can be reached, but it requires of both people or how many people are involved in the situation to cooperate. So with the Three of Cups being here, I do feel like in the month of August, you might be invited to a gathering, you might be spending more time with your friends or with a certain group of people. But for some reason, I am thinking of this Three of Cups as an online community. So some of you could be becoming part of an online community or you could find yourself being more active on social media or online platforms, you know, like commenting um, or responding to comments. Yeah, I just feel like there is this kind of heads up to be mindful of your communication, how you express yourself, especially express yourself through wording. But I do see you socializing and or interacting with others in the month of August. It might not be throughout the entire month, but there might be some points in the month of August where you are going to feel very social, be it socializing in person or socializing through the internet online. And this could be with new people, people that you will be meeting for the first time in the month of August, but it could also be with your friends, with people that you already know. Yeah, I see you getting deep and personal with some people. <laughs> you might be sharing very vulnerable things with a few people or a group of people. Um, and I do feel called to say that if there is drinking involved, you might end up oversharing. <laughs> you might end up saying more than you intended to. So yeah, just a heads up. So next we have the Knight of Cups, and this is such a sweet card. The Knight of Cups can denote an offer, an invitation, as well as a romantic proposal. And it's interesting because we have the key term union. So if you are single and looking, you could be meeting someone in the month of August. And the Knight of Cups is associated with water signs, so this could be either a Pisces, Cancer, and or Scorpio. Doesn't have to be, but just putting it out there in case it resonates with any one of you. Because this could definitely be someone that you already know, and you're getting to know more in the month of August. And you might be meeting them, or meeting them again, through a social gathering. Maybe one night you get invited out and that's when you bump into them or you meet them for the first time. But the Knight of Cups is someone who is quite charming, attractive, at least attractive to you. This is someone who is quite sensitive, sensitive to the needs of others, sensitive to others' emotions. I feel like this is someone who can easily pick up when someone is not feeling comfortable, when someone is in distress. Um, and I feel like they go out of their way to assure that someone who is not feeling comfortable feels comfortable and safe. This is also someone who is highly creative. They might pursue some type of creative arts or hobbies, but they don't have to. I just feel like they're very imaginative. If you have a conversation with them and they feel safe around you, if they feel comfortable with you enough to open up, you will find that they have a very unique way of perceiving the world and of thinking. They like to challenge their beliefs or their thinking. They are someone who is open to change and is quite open-minded. Of course, they have their morals, they have their values, and they are quite committed to those, but 
they are not opposed to listening to others perspective and trying to understand it even though they might not agree with it yeah and what I'm sensing with this knight of cups is that they might not be your usual type or like your ideal type so if this is someone new at first glance you might not really click with them um, but it is when you start interacting with them that you are going to find yourself attracted to this person. Yeah, for a lot of you, I feel like this Knight of Cups is someone new. But for those of you who are already in a committed relationship, I feel like this Knight of Cups is representing the first stages of a relationship, like going out on dates, getting to know one another. So if you recently entered a relationship, I see you spending time with your significant other and getting to know them more and more and feeling more comfortable with them. And for those of you who currently are in a committed relationship and you've been with your significant other for months or even years now, I feel like this Knight of Cups is expressing how in the month of August, you are going to feel like you're in the first stages of your relationship with your significant other. So it could be that you are going out on dates or spending more time with each other, getting to know each other all over again. I do recall I mentioned spicing things up when I was going to shuffle the decks. So for some of you, this could be your way of trying to spice things up in your relationship because I get a very flirty vibe from this Knight of Cups. So these dates, these deep, intimate, vulnerable conversations and getaways could be strengthening the bond, the union between you and your significant other. Yeah, so that's very sweet. Okay, but now moving on to the Three of Wands. So it's interesting. We have two threes in this spread. So 33. And that's the number that came up at the beginning. So once again, 33 could be a significant number. Maybe some of you are turning 33 in the month of August. And that's what all of these people are celebrating. Maybe they're celebrating you. So if that's the case, happy birthday to you. But the Three of Wands represents expansion, forward planning, and moving forward. It's a card of feeling free to venture out into the world or to try something new. Hmm. And it's strange. I just got this vibe from the Three of Wands of being freed from something. So some of you could be ending a significant phase or chapter of your life. And that is giving you the freedom to explore something new or it's freeing up more time for you to try out new things or to do something else. So one thing I could think of is like graduating, <laughs> graduating from school or we do have the key term conclude, like concluding a course or concluding a project. This could even be something like retirement. For some, this could be you deciding to quit a job like move on from a company um, and this might allow you to explore other job opportunities or give you some time to go on a vacation, take a break. Because I feel like the Three of Wands could also talk about travel, going on a vacation, you know, like treating yourself. You know what? The other interpretation that is coming through, I feel like this Three of Wands is referring to this Knight of Cups. Remember how I said that universe might throw curveballs curveballs at you in order to allow you the opportunity to slow down because you might be feeling a bit impulsive in the month of August. And for some, this might have to do with this Knight of Cups. So because what I feel with the Three of Wands is someone is feeling so excited about this whole Knight of Cups situation that they all of a sudden decide to drop everything to go see the Knight of Cups. Because the Three of Wands can denote a long distance relationship. Hmm, and it's interesting because I was talking about how this Three of Cups could be signifying you meeting people online and how it's possible that through this group, you meet this Knight of Cups. So you might be meeting this Knight of Cups online or if you do meet this Knight of Cups in person, it could be that they 
are only visiting for a while. Like you met them whilst they were traveling, but now they have to go back. And this three of wands could be speaking about you all of a sudden deciding to drop everything to travel to meet this Knight of Cups or reunite with this Knight of Cups. Yeah, and I feel like with the Ace of Wands being in the horizontal position, this could be Universe's way of saying, whoa, 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 slow down a bit. Do we really want to do this? I know you want to see the Knight of Cups, but do you really have to do this now or can we wait for a better time to reunite with this person? And now that I think of it, this paper bow is making me think of travel. And <laughs> there was that message, wind resistance. So I just feel like these cards are saying there's no need to take any form of impulsive action when it comes to this Knight of Cups or this situation. You can take your time with it and maybe it is being advised to take your time with this relationship. Especially if you are taking impulsive action or rushing into things because there is a fear of losing or missing out. When we take actions in reaction to those fears, things don't usually always work out or they don't pan out in the best way so um, this could be reassurance that you don't need to feel like you need to rush things or push for things you don't need to fear that you will miss out because you won't but with the three of wands being here I feel like a lot of you are going to feel very or a bit more extroverted in the month of August. There's a lot of excitement emanating from the Three of Wands. So you could be feeling quite energetic this month. Um, you might want to work on several things at once. You might have a lot of new ideas and you might be eager to start working on them. And Spirit is really excited about this energy, but they don't want you to get burnt out from all this excitement. So know that it's okay to work at one thing at a time. You don't have to fill your plate with so many different projects or responsibilities. You can prioritize a few things and focus on that and give it your all so that you can make sure that you are delivering a good product or that nothing is amiss, that you did give it your all. Now with the magician being here, I feel like Spirit wants you to know that something that you have been trying to manifest will manifest this month. And for some, for those of you who have been trying to manifest a new relationship, especially a romantic relationship into your life, you know, this Knight of Cups could be this manifestation coming into fruition. But I feel like you guys are attracting something. And for some, you will be attracting it this month, but for others you might just receive signs or confirmation that this whatever you are attracting is on its way. And I also feel like this is um, Spirit's way of saying that in the month of August will be a good time to set intentions. Um, and if you are into manifestations, to manifest. Because there's so much energy, excited energy going on here. So... You can channel all of this energy or most of this energy into your manifestations. Okay, but those are all the messages I am seeing with these cards. So now I'm going to move into the last segment of this reading. So for this segment, I will give space for you to receive a direct message from your spirit animal. And as you can see, we have three different rocks to choose from. So I will ask of you to take a moment and cast your gaze upon these rocks and see which one calls out to you because the one that calls out to you will be the one that has a message for you. So if you are called to more than one rock, that is okay. It might simply mean that there's more than one spirit animal who wants to come through for you guys or who has a message for you. Okay, so we have stone one, two, and three. And I will start off with stone numero uno. So, who, whoops. Who is the spirit animal that has a message for those who chose rock one? Okay, those are too many cards. So let me try again. Okay. And we have the owl with transformation and the message 
Owl often arrives prior to significant life events. A resolute harbinger of transformation, she offers sturdy connection to the primordial universe and the tethered energies that bind us. Opening doors of contemplation, she encourages us to look beyond illusion and spurs us toward growth. As we explore the magic of life, we find capacity. The memory of our experiences are molded into pillars of wisdom. She reminds us to listen closely, imparting discernment when needed and reassurance in the midst of confusion. So there we have it, the owl. Let me just bring back this paper boat. And now moving on to those who chose rock numero dos. I'd like to note that I felt a bit of frustration when shuffling the deck um, for this group. Um, yeah, but we have the Raven. Ooh, and there's still so much noise going on. I keep needing to pause so that you guys won't be b bombarded by noise. But I was going to say it's interesting because I was or we were speaking about how birds especially blackbirds, could be of significance this month. And I did mention how this was a crow. That's how it is described in the guidebook of this deck, but, you know, it could very well be a raven. So crows or ravens might very well be a spirit animal of yours, but definitely blackbirds will play a significant role in your life in the month of August. Okay, but we have truth with the message, raven is strongly associated with shamanism, healing, and the realm of the dead. She is a solitary bird and most often found in wild, chaotic places. Her hearth may be swathed in a veil, but her sight and speech are clear. When visited by Raven, she has intention to speak the truth until it is heard. Raven teaches us to engage in deep, transformative change, closing one chapter of our lives to bring forth another. When Raven appears, she will not leave until we have listened. Ooh, interesting. But now moving on to the third stone. Ooh, this is my favorite one. So we have the B Aww. with partnership. B is a devoted partner who values hard work that aids his family. His actions are nothing short of divine. His dedication to the hive is unparalleled. He embodies devout partnership. In collaboration, B is a modest fauna who believes humility is golden. He encourages us to accept our, our shortcomings and to embrace the support and love of others. With gentle persistence, B nurtures our spirit, rallies our heart, and prompts us to drink from the elixir of life. Aww. Okay, so there we have it. Those are all the messages we have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. If you are new to this channel and you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in my website and the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching until the very end and thanks to all of you who took a moment to watch the advertisements. That is the most wonderful way to support me and to support this channel. So muchas, muchas gracias. Yep, but that is all for now. Wishing you a wonderful month of August and until the next moment, bye-bye. Hola Seekers who chose group 3, the magnifying glass, bienvenidos to your reading. If you are interested to know how this reading is going to unfold, then I do recommend for you to listen to the intro if you haven't done so already because it is there where I go over everything we are going to cover in this reading. Okay, but as always, I will begin the reading with an intuitively channeled message and then I'll move right into the cards. So when connecting with the energy of this group, wait, first of all, the reason why I was hesitant to say magnifying glass, it's because I'm not sure what this little drawing wanted to be, whether it was a magnifying glass or a hand mirror. 
So I'm going to assume it's a magnifying glass. And I feel this is important because one of the things I'm sensing for this group is that your psychic abilities or your sensitivity could be amplifying this month. And we know that the magnifying glass makes things look bigger or closer up. And that's reminding me of something being amplified. So for those of you who are discovering what your psychic abilities are or who have been working to strengthen your psychic abilities, you are going to see some progress in regards to that in the month of August. I especially am picking up on clairsentience. So you will be feeling or sensing the presence of spirit. I know clairsentience is often related to emotions. So it is often a clair that is seen in empaths, but I'm getting more of like physical touch, sensing it in your body. So one thing that comes to mind is when you get like a tickling sensation at the top of your head or you might feel like goosebumps or coolness, heat, and that could be you sensing spirit. Which is why I mentioned sensitivity, because you could be feeling sensitive to energy this month. So if you enter a room and the energy is quite dense, you will pick up on that. If someone is in a good mood, you are going to pick up on that quite quickly and easily. But apart from energy and psychic abilities, I also see a lot of you feeling quite sensitive to stimuli. So sound, smell, touch, taste. I feel all or some of these senses are going to be amplified this month. And this message just came through to experience the world more closely. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but there you have it. Now, I also see a lot of you guys taking a closer look at something. I see you paying closer attention to detail. Maybe this could have something to do with your career, profession, job, even your education, your studies. Like you are about to turn in a project and you're revising, you're looking over things, making sure that everything is tip-top shape. Yeah, but I keep getting this image in my mind's eye of a contract, of fine print. So some of you could be looking over a contract this month. And this could be Spirit's way of letting you know, don't forget to read the fine print. Make sure you thoroughly read through everything. Actually, for some of you, this might be Spirit's way of nudging you or encouraging you to read through an old contract because I feel like you might find something there, something that might help you in your current situation or give you the upper hand. I'm thinking of like a loophole. Like you might have missed an important detail and Spirit is encouraging you to look back so that you can catch it because this might help your current situation. I know I said contract, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a contract. This could be any written document. So for example, if you are writing a report, maybe a rough draft or an old report that you did can help you make sense of something. This could also be like a letter, a letter that someone sent you or that you sent out to someone, an email perhaps. Yeah, this message might be for only a specific few of you, but I felt called to share it. The word winter came to mind, so winter season might be of significance for some of you guys. If something happened during winter season that left you a bit confused or was unclear, you might be gaining clarity of the situation in the month of August. Or you could be seeing some results or receiving some news about something that you're dealing with in the month of August in winter season. And I believe winter season in the southern hemisphere stretches from June all the way to early September. So if you've been waiting to receive clarity about something or been waiting for a reply or for news, then you might very well be receiving it in the month of August. Also, the magnifying glass is reminding me of playfulness curiosity. So some of you could be feeling curious to learn something new this month or to look more into something. 
you know, this could be a subject or a skill, but for whatever reason, I'm thinking or I'm seeing a house and like someone getting curious as to what needs fixing in the house or the apartment and getting hands on on like DIY projects. Or this could be simply you feeling inspired to go outside and explore your backyard or explore nature and learn more about plants, their names, what helps them grow, their medicinal properties, and so on. Yeah, but a lot of you could definitely be exploring something new this month. Okay, but now I'm going to move into the cards. Okay, but I will first pull out an astrology card and this will give us more information about what the lessons of this month will be as well as what area of life will you see the most changes and or shifts this month or experience the most changes and or shifts this month. Um, okay, ooh, those are too many cards. Let me shuffle one more time. Okay. Those are too many cards. Hmm. So, do you guys see how many cards are flipping over? <laughs> so this could be a sign that a lot will be happening this month or you are going to see a lot of changes and or shifts in different areas of life this month. Okay, but... Oh! Oof, and that one flew out so quickly. Okay, so we have... The seventh house with Venus and Libra and the key term indecision. Okay, so the seventh house is the house of relationships, partnerships, and this could be romantic and or business partnerships, as well as contracts and agreements. And we were speaking about contracts in the intuitively channeled message. Hmm. So some of you could be thinking about either starting a business partnership in the month of August or possibly making some type of association or you could be signing a contract or an agreement in the month of August and once again I feel like this is just a heads up from spirit to you know not rush into things to look over things carefully and to take your time um, we do have the key term indecision and this is Libra energy and Libra is all about the scales. So, you know, this card can also be speaking about a major life decision. And this could be in any area of life. Relationships, career, studies, finances. So if you find yourself feeling a bit indecisive in the month of August, not 100% sure as to what decision to make or how to go about a situation, whether to sign a contract or to agree to someone else's requests or propose something better, then Spirit is advising that just like the scales, to outweigh your options, outweigh your pros and cons. This might help you with gaining some clarity and feeling a bit more certain about what decision to make. Of course, there might not be 100% certainty, if that happens to be your case, I feel like Spirit is saying that's okay. You don't have to be 100% certain in order to know that you made the right decision. Because we're humans and there's bound to be that hint of doubt. And a bit of doubt isn't bad. It just came to my attention and I actually was thinking about this a few weeks ago. But it was once again brought to my attention in a reading that I recently watched given by Carrie from the channel Kino Tarot. And I think it was actually an angel reading. So that's pretty interesting because we have an angel in this card. And it was the idea that doubts can actually help us discern. You know, of course, too much of something is never good. So too much doubt can create anxiety and confusion. But a little bit of doubt can actually help us ground, become level-headed, and even inspire us to be patient enough to use discernment. Because I feel like with Libra, the scales, it's talking about balancing or finding a balance between your intuition, your feelings, your emotions, and your logical thinking or analytical mind. So it's okay to not immediately feel with 100% certainty that something is right for you or that something is not meant to be. 
because maybe this could also be your higher selves or your angels or spirit guides way of letting you know there's no right or wrong here so if you feel this pause to think things through it might be because either choice could lead somewhere good or neither choice is a bad one so this is more about practicing your free will this is more about you choosing what you feel is right for you or right for you at this current moment so you know this could be a situation in which if you're faced between two paths both paths are going to lead you to the same destination. It's just that depending on which path you take, the experience towards the destination is going to be different. So it's more about maybe the journey rather than where this is going to lead you. So for example, if you are choosing between two jobs or professions, they both could lead you to success or financial stability or security, but one could be what you are truly passionate about, while the other one could be more of a practical profession. So that's just a hypothetical example to give you guys an idea. Um, I do notice we have an hourglass here. So I do want to point out that I feel like timing will also be what differentiates these different options or paths. You know, one path could be the quickest way to a destination while the other one might take a little bit more time. But just a heads up, just because one path is quicker doesn't mean that it is better, you know, because once again, going back to that career example, let's say the practical career could be the quickest way to get to the final outcome, to get to financial stability, while the career path that you are truly passionate about might take a little bit more time to reach that financial stability or security. But, you know, even though it takes a little bit more time, it could be the path that you truly enjoy. You know, it, it all depends. And it depends to what you are comfortable with and what you are looking for. So I feel like universe here, your angels are letting you decide. Um, but they're saying, don't worry. There's no right or wrong here. Just, of course, always remember to choose that which is in alignment with your morals and your values. I feel like that's the best way to know whether we are making the right decision whether we are acting in accordance to our morals, to our values, and if we are choosing something that is in alignment with that. Because if not, you know, the whole experience might be very, very uncomfortable. Okay, but now I'm going to pull out an Oracle card from the Southern Oracle deck, and this is to get the overall vibe of the month of August. Okay, so two, so many cards are falling out for you guys. Um, okay, but I'll take these two. So we have number 41 with it's blowing up a storm and the key phrases, strong momentum, sudden change, necessary shakeup, transformation, and hope. Interesting. And then we have number 15 with kiss my grits and the key phrases, no thank you, walk away, refusal, Know your worth, self-respect, and strength. I love that this card came out because we were talking about major life decisions of outweighing your options, your pros and cons. So definitely, I feel like this is spirit coming through to remind you, don't settle for anything less. You don't have to settle for anything less than your standards, than what you believe in, than what you are deserving of. So I feel like this is reassurance that it's okay to say no. Just because an offer comes through doesn't mean that you have to take it. I know there's situations in which we might feel under pressure or we might feel like we have no other option. And that's what I kind of get with this. It's blowing up a storm card. Um, maybe you guys are going through something difficult or you're in a situation in which any offer looks like a good offer. But with this Kiss My Grits card, I feel like Spirit is saying you still don't have to settle for anything less than. You don't have to compromise. It's what I'm getting with Kiss My Grits. Especially with this message, know your worth. 
and walk away. If something isn't right, if something is asking either too much of you or asking for you to sacrifice a part of who you are, then spirit is saying, you know, it's okay to walk away from that. And I feel like this is also the way that universe gets to understand what it is that you are okay to welcome in into your life or involve yourself with. You know, if universe offers us something and we look at it through honest eyes and decide that this is not for us, then your no is valuable information to the universe. It's kind of like a computer, a program or an app that is kind of getting to know you through your choices. So if you say no to something, then universe knows we have to offer them something different then. We have to level up in some way. And if you become more clear as to why you didn't want this, what wasn't working for you, that's even more valuable information to the universe. So with this Kiss My Grits card, also with this card, I feel like if you choose to say no to something that you honestly felt and knew wasn't for you, then no, you are not missing out on any opportunity because I feel like another offer, a better offer will come along. That's what I get with the it's blowing up a storm because look, we have a rainbow in the background and we do have the key term hope. So with strong momentum, I feel like as soon as you make a decision, things are going to start moving pretty quickly for you guys. Maybe you guys were asked to make a decision a while back, but you've kind of been holding back on making a decision because you have been indecisive. Then this whole waiting to make a decision could have created some form of pause in your life or could have kept you in this storm, you know, metaphorical storm for a while. So I feel like as soon as you make this decision or choose, become decisive, that's when this storm will immediately clear and the rainbow will come out. Things will become clear. And I feel like more opportunities will come because we do have the key term transformation. And with the phrase necessary shakeup, I feel like this whole situation was necessary or it was created to bring about some type of transformation, to provide an opportunity for you to be guided somewhere better. And I know this whole thing is more easier said than done because when we're going through it, when we're in the storm, when we're experiencing these shakeups, they can feel scary. And so if that's the case, I don't know if this could provide any form of reassurance, but with these two cards, I feel like all this is leading to somewhere better. It might not seem like it in the moment, but this storm is here to remove you from something that was not so good for you or to help you upgrade in some way. You know, this storm can also be speaking about an inner turmoil. You feel divided because you are not sure which path to take or how to approach the situation or how to move forwards. But I feel like as soon as you make your decision, as you as soon as you choose to move forward or move away from something this storm will dissipate like i said there might be a hint of doubt here and there but it won't be this storm with the rainbow being here in the background i'm sensing you feeling much lighter more sure about the path that you have chosen for yourself or where you are headed so if something doesn't look so good right now with this card Especially the key term hope is really standing out to me. Know that things are going to get better. They are going to get better. So maybe this storm needs to happen first in order to clear the field or clear the skies. So this rainbow here could be very visible. Now with the self-respect and know your worth, some of you might already know this, but for those of you who need a reminder, You deserve the best. You are worthy. Don't reject something because you think, because you have a self-limited belief that you can't measure up to it or that you are not up to par or that it's too good for you or any of that hurtful thinking. Because if it's being presented to you, it's for a reason. With the angel being here, this could very well be something that you have been longing for, that you have been wishing for, 
and your wishes being granted. This could very well be a blessing or a prayer answered. So don't say no to that which is of you because of self-limited beliefs or thinking. Um, yeah, and I feel like with the angel being here, know that your angels, your guardian angels, possibly even an archangel or archangels are with you and will be with you in the month of August. Um, yeah, but because this is the seventh house and this is the planet Venus, you know, this major decision that you could be making in the month of August could be in regards to a relationship or relationships and more specifically a romantic relationship. And if it does happen to be in regards to a romantic relationship, I feel like Spirit is saying this is here to either transform the relationship itself or to lead you into a new relationship. So if you feel like you are in a relationship that is not respecting you, that is tipping the scales way too much, then this could definitely be something like choosing to walk away from this relationship. And if so, know that this is leading you towards a relationship where the scales are balanced, where there will be mutual respect, admiration, and love. Oh, before I move on, I do want to share this message that keeps coming to mind. Um, it might not resonate with everybody, but it could resonate with a few of you. The message, read them your rights, came to mind. Okay, but I would like to point out the numbers here in case they are of significance to any one of you guys. So we have the number 41, we have 15, and of course we have the number 7. And if we look at the numbers individually, we have 5, 4, and 1. And if we reduce the numbers, we have 6. 6 is a number of balance and reciprocity, harmony, and unconditional love. Number 5 is a number of change, transformation, and the number four is a number of healing, protection, stability, and I personally associate it with new foundations. And the number one is a number of new beginnings, assertiveness, leadership, and the word hope just came to mind. So it could be associated with the energy of hope. And for the number seven, I see it as a very spiritual number and a number of good fortune and abundance as well. Okay, but now I'm going to move into El Tarot. And as I mentioned with the other two groups, I wanted to try something different in the way that I pull out the cards. So, guys, so please bear with me. I was going to say, guys, bear with me. Okay. So there we have it. Starting off for your first card, we have the Three of Cups. This also came out for group two in the same spot. And we also have the Devil in Reverse with Release, Independence, and Reclaim Power. Ooh, interesting. This reminds me a lot of the card Kiss My Grits. And for the third card, we have the Ace of Swords in Reverse with Misinformation, wrong decision, and lack of focus. Interesting. And now I'm going to pull out one card, which will give us the overall energy of this spread. Okay, and we have the Page of Cups with Upright, with Daydreamer, Leading with Heart, and Sensitive. And I am looking at the card at the back of the deck as a postscript from Spirit, P.S. So this could be something that they want you to know, to look forward to in the month of August. Ooh, yes! And we have the Sun Upright with Success, Optimism, and Openness. And I'm actually very excited for you guys. Okay. Yes, the sun. Okay, so they just want you to know that this storm, whatever this storm is, whether you are experiencing it in your outer world or in your inner world, this storm will be clearing sometime in the month of August. You know, the sun 
also speaks about hope. So you can expect for things to look up. And knowing that the sun is the brightest star in the sky, so bright that it outshines all the other stars when it is present, this is also making me think of guidance. You are not in the dark, though it might seem like it sometimes. This could very well be a form of divine intervention. You are being heavenly guided and you are being heavenly or divinely looked after. And I'm noticing how in the sun card, we actually have two people, which is reminding me of or making me think of a couple. So like I said, for some of you, this could be in regards to a romantic relationship with Libra, the seventh house and Venus. So just know that in terms to your relationships, your future is bright. Okay, but now I want to pull out some key terms. Oh my God, my neighbor's birds are just going at it. Um, and this will let us know what main themes this month will cover. This message just came to mind. You are never alone. We are always here with you. And I feel like it's coming from your spirit team, your angels, guardian angels. I feel like one. Okay, there. So we have listen. Um, and because I just gave that message, this might very well be your spirit guides or your angels saying, yes, we are here with you. If you just listen, you'll know that we are right beside you. Um, and I was speaking about psychic abilities or clairsentience at the beginning. So you could very well be feeling the presence of your spirit guides or angels during the month of August. And that can serve as reassurance or comfort. When angels come through, there's such a warm and gentle feeling. It's not scary. <laughs> One feels comforted by their presence. Um, but we do have enlightened Healing? Ooh, interesting. The sun is also making me think of healing. Um, we have project. Um, we have growth. The sun also makes me think of growth because the sun helps the plants grow. Um, we have validate. Ask. Hmm. Commitment. Ascend. Transform, and we also have beginning. And once again, referring back to the sun, the sun also makes me think of new beginnings because, you know, a new day, new beginnings. Okay, so I feel like I went on and on about the sun, so now I'm going to move into the other cards. Starting off with the Page of Cups, this gives off a very playful, imaginative, and daydreamer energy, which is I know what I was picking up on when I was delivering the intuitively channeled message. I did mention how some of you could be feeling quite curious to explore or learn something new this month. With the Page of Cups, there is this feeling of childlike wonder. And what's also interesting that on this card, we actually have the key term sensitive which was mentioned in the intuitively channeled message. The Page of Cups can often describe someone who is quite empathetic and an empath. So like I said, you guys could be feeling quite sensitive this month, sensitive to energy, sensitive to stimuli, and emotionally sensitive as well. You know, with this um, it's blowing up storm. It makes sense that some of you could be feeling quite sensitive this month, especially if there is a lot going on in your life or if there has been a lot going on in your life. So that is quite understandable. Um, and I am so happy that the sun showed up for you guys because it's such a comforting feeling to know that this storm is going to clear up very, very soon. The sun also makes me think of clarity. And it's interesting because in the Page of Cups, we actually have someone scrying, which is a divination practice. 
Hmm, for those of you who have been trying to gain information about something, this could be a situation or even a person, you will be receiving this information in the month of August. And now looking back at this 7th house Venus and Libra card, this message might be for a specific few. Some of you could have been stressing about who your soulmate or your life partner, your counterpart is. You know, this could be a situation in which you know you have a soul connection with someone, but you haven't met this person yet. You just know that they're out there and you're super curious to know more about them or know who they are. And your curiosity might have led you to hyper focus on figuring out all these details and information about them. And that could have created some stress because you weren't receiving the information that you felt you needed. So if that happens to be your case, I know it was very specific, but if that happens to be your case, I feel like divine timing was at play here. I don't know why, but I feel it strongly with the sun card. So it might be that when you were asking for this information, it was not the right time for you to receive it. But now in the month of August, you could start receiving information about this person or confirmation because we do have the key term validate. So I do see that your angels or your guides are going to be validating a lot of your intuitive insights in the month of August. Yeah, because we also have the key term enlightened. So I do feel like you guys will be enlightened about something in the month of August. And for those of you who have been trying to find a solution to a problem, you could be enlightened about how to solve this problem or go about it in the month of August. And with the Three of Cups here, I'm seeing celebration. So I do feel like you guys will be celebrating a victory. So maybe something that you thought or you felt was not turning out in your favor could be turning out in your favor in the month of August. I especially sense that with the Sun card. Maybe it's not the results that you expected, but the outcome is still favorable and to you in some way. Yeah, with the key term project, some of you could be completing a project because we do have the page of cups here. This could be a creative project. It doesn't have to be the who. And you are celebrating with others the completion of this project. The page of cups can also talk about engagements or marriage. So some of you could be attending a wedding or an engagement party. This could be your own, but I do sense that this is you attending someone else's engagement party or marriage celebration. Because this Three of Cups in specific makes me think of social gatherings, being with friends or being with like-minded people, people that you get along with, people that you feel comfortable with. So you could be spending time with friends during the month of August, um, or you could be attending some type of social event. You know, this doesn't mean that throughout the entire month you will be out and partying or socializing. This could very well be speaking about one single event or gathering that you will be attending. But if it's coming up, it's because it's significant in some way or the other. So for example, if you have been feeling stressed or worried or down about something, maybe this gathering or social event will help uplift your spirits. Maybe the people that you associate with or your friends, you will receive some comfort or reassurance from them or possibly advice and or guidance that could really help you. You know, oftentimes universe or spirit delivers information to us through people. <laughs> We are all part of universe, so we all hold an individual wisdom that is part of source. So you could be receiving valuable information and or wisdom from friends, colleagues, co-workers, acquaintances, or to be more specific, for this month, people that you will meet in some form of social gathering. I'm so sorry about the squawking. I'm not sure if it's annoying to you guys. I've gotten pretty used to it, but sometimes it can be a bit annoying, especially if I become super aware of it. Sometimes I wonder if that spirit coming through like, yes, this is what they needed to hear or as a form of confirmation, but... Oh, and with the key term listen, maybe there's a reason why I went on that little rant. 
sound or noises could be important in the month of August. It could be spirit's way of telling you to pay attention. The Page of Cups is also someone who is very psychic, so some of you could be experiencing clairaudience or your clairaudience abilities could be super strong this month. With the key term growth, I feel like for a lot of you, your psychic abilities are growing, especially because we have the key term ascend. It's making me think of like a spiritual ascension or possibly even like a spiritual awakening because we do have the key term enlightened. So some of you could be awakening to your psychic abilities this month. Um, but with the devil card being in reverse, <laughs> this speaks about detachment and independence. So I see a lot of you breaking free of chains that were holding you down and reclaiming your power. And these chains can be anything. You know, for some, this could be a relationship that wasn't very healthy, that was either causing you to doubt yourself or doubt your self-worth. And in the month of August, this could very well be this major life decision that you're making to break free from this relationship, to choose something different for yourself. But of course, this doesn't necessarily have to be about a relationship. Um, this could be something like breaking free of a harmful workplace or breaking free of a harmful habit or even mindset because we were speaking about contracts with the seventh house this could also be about breaking out of a contract a contract that was holding you back or the devil in reverse could be signifying the end of a contract if this is about a contract or an agreement or possibly even a business partnership the ending of this is allowing for the ending of a cycle. You know, when I was looking at this It's Blowing Up a Storm card, it was reminding me a lot of the tower in the tarot deck. And the tower is all about removing that which is no longer in alignment with you or was never stable in the first place so that you can move into something that is stable or so that you can start focusing on building and creating something that is in alignment with you and that is stable and is for the long term and having the page of cups here a lot of you could be creatives or creators artists and this devil could have very well been something that was keeping you from exploring your creativity or blocking your self-expression it was not allowing you to bloom or blossom as an artist a creative a creator but now with this devil showing up in reverse, you are free. You are a free, independent artist. You are free to collaborate with whoever you want to. You are free to express yourself however you feel inspired to do so. You are free to explore your creativity. And with the key term beginning here, yeah, it definitely feels like it. a cycle is ending. A cycle of, it feels to me like imprisonment, not being able to speak your truth, not being able to live authentically. And now this new cycle is beginning, one in which you are free to show up as your authentic self. Because the sun does make me think of authenticity. And as you can see, these people look like they're not wearing any clothes. So it's that feeling of not hiding who you are. Yeah, and with the key term transform, I feel like this devil in reverse is allowing for transformation to occur. Or this could very well be speaking about transformation. By saying no, you know, by saying no and walking away from that which is not in alignment with you, you are allowing for transformation and growth to occur as well as healing. You know, because if there were self-limited beliefs and now you are choosing to acknowledge them and not entertain them any longer, then this is allowing for healing. You are now validating yourself, which is beautiful to see. I feel like the devil card in reverse is also acknowledging the fact that you have the freedom to choose. At least now you have the freedom to choose. Maybe before you felt like you didn't, but now you do. The devil 
whatever the devil might might have been in your life or currently is in your life will no longer be controlling you. And I feel like this is also a call for celebration. Maybe you are celebrating with your loved ones to the fact that you beat this devil, that you overcame this devil, that it is no longer a part of your life and doesn't have to be a part of your life. Yeah, the phrase binding contract just came to mind. And you know, binding contracts, I'm thinking it in a very general sense, as in business contracts, but also as in soul contracts. Maybe for some, this could be referring to a soul contract, a soul agreement that is either ending or you're breaking out of it in the month of August. Like this could very well be a situation in which you and another soul agree to come into each other's life to teach each other valuable but very, very hard lessons. And you have now fulfilled that contract and this cycle is ending. So now you are free to explore new relationships. So with the devil card in reverse, there's once again that repeated message of overcoming hardships, overcoming something difficult, you know, reaching the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we do have the Ace of Swords in reverse. Aces always speak of new beginnings. This Ace in specific is associated with the element of air, which has to do with communications and the mental realm. So we were speaking about indecision. And it's interesting how we have this phrase, wrong decision, because I gave this whole speech about how there was no right or wrong decision. Um, so I feel like this is just a reminder that as long as you are choosing something that is in alignment with your morals and your values, with your standards, then you don't have to worry about making a wrong decision. Because we bump into the devil when we follow something that is against our morals and values and ethics. That's when we shake hands with the devil. So sometimes we say, you know, follow your intuition, but your intuition is about knowing what is in alignment with your core values. If something feels off, it's because it goes against what you stand for. And the Ace of Swords, someone mentioned it in the comment section, and I often thought this, but never mentioned it in the general readings. I don't know why. But this statue here, it reminds me of the goddess Athena. And when I think of Athena, I think of integrity. So if there is integrity, honesty, sincerity in your decisions and in your actions, you don't have to worry so much about making a wrong decision. I feel like Athena wouldn't stand for injustice and she wouldn't stand for BS. And also, whenever I look at this Ace of Swords, I think that this statue here is representing the higher self of this 3D persona we have here. So if you are ever wondering, I don't know if this might be helpful for some of you guys. So if you are ever indecisive about something or you're wondering what the right decision is, maybe ask yourself, what would my higher self do? Or some people think of their higher self as the best version of themselves. So you could think, what would the best version of me do? What would they do? And follow that. And by doing so, you'll know that you are already on the path of becoming the best version of yourself. You are already embodying your highest self. Now, the Ace of Swords upright does speak about clarity, revelations, victory, breakthroughs, and success. It also speaks about mental clarity. So it being in reverse, I feel like it's just a heads up from spirit to remember that balance we were speaking about. You know how I mentioned that it's important to balance out, you know, your intuition, your emotions with your analytical or logical thinking? The Ace of Swords is about the logic. And looking at the Page of Cups, which is representing the overall energy, the Page of Cups is associated with the element of water, and water rules the realms of emotions and intuition. So I feel like some of you could tend to get carried away by your emotions. And if so, this is just a reminder from spirit to be mindful of this. 
you know our intuition is super helpful and, and i feel like you guys are super intuitive but it doesn't hurt to be analytical every once in a while logic isn't bad and it's there for a reason so it, it's a tool so might as well use it use it but don't overuse it remember that balance because we do have this key term misinformation so i feel like this is referring to getting informed you know gaining as much clarity as you can about a situation and we do have the key term ask i feel like whenever this key term falls out it's speaking about not being afraid to ask for more information or ask for more clarity with the key term commitment um i feel like this is simply reminding me of like contracts and partnerships committing to some things so once again before you commit to something before you say yes take into consideration everything we just spoke about but for some of you the page of cups can denote a romantic proposal and i did mention an engagement early on so some of you could be receiving a romantic proposal this month and this key term commitment could very well be referring to you committing to someone or a leveling up in your current commitment with someone and looking at the sun card yeah some of you could definitely be leveling up in your commitment with someone yeah but there's so much joy here there's happiness there's love there's bliss it feels like two people coming together and meeting eye to eye i don't know why i never really get it from the sun card but i'm getting a counterpart vibes so this could be speaking about a counterpart that is going to come into your life. It might not be in the month of August. It could be later on this year. But I feel like this is simply reassurance from Spirit that yes, there is a beautiful, harmonious, loving relationship waiting for you. Yeah, so this commitment that I was speaking about before, I feel like it's for those of you who are already seeing someone or who are already in a romantic relationship. Um, but for those of you who aren't, and you are looking for your counterpart, that last message was definitely for you guys. Um, okay, but now I'm going to move into the last segment of this reading. Oh, and with the sun card, I don't know if I said it, but expect good news. And I feel like this is for everyone who chose this group. Expect good news in the month of August. So anything you were worried about, expect good news in regards to it. Okay, so in this segment, I will give space for you to receive a direct message from your spirit animal. So as you can see, we have three different rocks on the table. And I will ask of you to cast your gaze upon these rocks and see which one calls out to you. Because the one that calls out to you will be the one that has a message for you. So if more than one calls out to you, that is perfectly fine. It might simply mean that there is more than one spirit animal who wants to communicate with you at this moment. So we have rock one, two, and three. Okay, so now I will start off with rock numero uno. Who is the spirit animal that has a message for those who chose rock one? Oh. Woo. So we have coral with community and the message, there is weakness in arrogant independence. Forsaking one's community can lead to regrettable susceptibility. Coral teaches us to embrace each member of the collective to amplify our individual strength. In solidarity, we find fortitude. Years of false criticism and self-doubt are defeated when we join together. Coral inspires us to lean upon the people we trust. In partnership, we cultivate reassurance. In collaboration, we are confident and prosperous. Ooh, okay. This is reminding me a lot of the Three of Cups. Yeah. Some of you might have distanced yourself from your loved ones or friends or group of people because of this devil here. And now with this devil showing up in reverse, you know, leaving your life, um, I see you reuniting with your loved ones, with your friends. And that could very well be what this Three of Cups is speaking about. Um, 
finding or having that support again. Okay, but now moving on to rock numero dos. Um, okay, moving on to those who chose rock numero dos. Okay, I'll take this one. And we have Hawk with the key term clarity and the message, a gifted messenger of the spirit world, Hawk encourages us to use our powers to focus. We are not always called to lead, but when the position is vacant, take it and act with clarity. With wind under wing and Hawk as our guide, flight is possible. With confidence, our goals are achievable. His presence aids us with higher perspective. Hawk inspires us to be less distracted by the details. He encourages us to focus on new heights, harness his altitude, and lead with vision by facing challenges with objectivity. Hmm, it's interesting. Because I was speaking about how this month you could be encouraged to, to take a closer look at things, but maybe for some of you, especially for those of you who tend to focus on the details or hyper focus or hyper fixate on things. Maybe this is spirit's way of reminding you that it's okay to have a bird's eye view on the situation. It's okay to detach from a situation in order to gain clarity from it. So I feel like this goes back to using discernment, you know, discerning when it's necessary to pay closer attention and when it's better to look at things from this bird's eye view. Okay, but now moving on to those who chose rock three. A lot of cards keep wanting to fall out. Um, so possibly for those of you who chose Rock 3, you have a lot of spirit animals who want to come through for you guys. Okay. Oops. But we have the beaver with motivation and the message, Beaver brings vision, creativity, and action to our lives. She encourages us to take inventory of our resources and work in harmony with others to achieve common goals. When Beaver arrives, it is time to work. Excuses are indefensible. Like water under the bridge, she prompts us to relinquish extraneous baggage and expose our limitations, asking hard questions and motivating us to action. Beaver invites us to explore our differences. Imagine our gifts and commit to the journey. Hmm, it's so interesting. We had a lot of messages of working with others. You could be working with others or could be encouraged to work with others in the month of August. Or maybe this is a message from Spirit that it is okay to ask for support from others. And that if you ask for it, you will receive it. Um, okay, but those are all the messages we have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. I know I can feel it. I still need to go back and edit out the pauses and such, but I can sense that this will be a lengthy reading. So if you are still here, I truly appreciate you watching till the very end. And thanks to all of you who took a moment to watch the advertisements. That is the most simplest way to support me and to support this channel. So muchas, muchas gracias. I do offer personal readings. If you are interested, all the information is in my website and the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Yes, but that is all for now. Thank you so much for being here and wishing you a wonderful month of August. Until the next moment, bye-bye.